Good morning, Alan, and hello, everyone else. I'm Terry. Welcome to TARDIS Spider. Today, the third doctor, free at last. If you enjoy this video, please leave a comment. Please like, please subscribe. And now, the third doctor, free at last. In the ancient myths, the Greek Hercules performed 12 labors. The third doctor is exiled to one time and one planet. John Pertree's doctor will have 15 encounters, up to and including the three doctors, with what he knows are evils he must stop. The third doctor is the warrior of the classic doctors, ready to defend himself or others with Venusian Aikido or available weapons, and the most powerful of his weapons is his mind. The final of these 15 adventures is the season opening story of The Three Doctors. The Three Doctors is one of the most important stories in the myth of classic Doctor Who. Television is still a young medium, with the 10th anniversary of Doctor Who being quite a milestone. With this in mind, The Three Doctors is just what is needed. This is the first multi-Doctor story and the best, in my opinion. Through the use of tape footage, William Hartnell was able to join Patrick Troughton and John Pertree in a story as entertaining as its premise, remembering the past. As well as looking back, the three doctors moves the third doctor's story forward, and as a reward for saving the Time Lord, the doctor's exile is ended and he is again free to wander through time and space. The third doctor's intergalactic travels would begin making unit stories rare. The Carnival of Monsters would show the Doctor and Joe miniaturized inside of an extraterrestrial peep show. This story is a holdover from Season 9's recording block. This is a story in which Robert Holmes will showcase that he is one of the wittiest and most imaginative writers in Doctor Who. Tear in Space brings John Pertwee's favorite aliens during his time in the series, The Draconians, to the screen. This is a bland tale best remembered as the Master's last appearance as Roger Delgado, who was lost in an automobile accident. Frontier in Space would lead directly into The Planet of the Daleks. This is the first story scripted by Terry Nation for Doctor Who since 1965. A return to the style Nation had used in the past, but matched with Robert Holmes. We get a story with epic aspirations, and while visual effects have moved on since the 1960s, Nation's request for an army of 10,000 Daleks remains over-ambitious. As was the tradition, the season finale was written by Robert Sloman and Barry Letts. This time we get The Green Death, their most successful collaboration. This is a story that combines political satire, current concerns of the effect for what man has done with his industry on the planet, and a cold hard look at artificial intelligence. Add more emotion than we had seen on the screen up to that time. The poignancy of Joe Grant's farewell to close the final episode, in its own quiet unassuming way, was the moment of the anniversary year. Recorded at the end of the 10th recording block, The Time Warrior is the opening story for the 11th series. This story will introduce the Who universe to reporter Sarah Jane Smith, possibly the most popular companion in the history of the entire series. In his real life, Pertie was still struggling with the departure of Caddy Manning, only for the tragic death of Roger Delgado to make this an even more difficult time for him personally. This is another time when the ever-changing cast will influence the show on and off the screen. The Time Warrior is the only pseudo-historical of the Pertwee era. This story will introduce the Suntarans, a race of powerful, stout, aggressive warriors. In this story, it is the ruthless Commander Lynx. In Part 2, we will learn the name of the Doctor's home, the Planet Gallifrey. The Doctor and Sarah will return to their present time just as the invasion of dinosaurs nears its peak. This is Malcolm Hulk's final script, one of his best. Sadly, it suffers from some of the worst special effects in the show's history. 
In this story, Bessie would be swapped for John Pertwee's own Who-mobile, a futuristic flying car. The unit family would further dissipate with the revelation that Captain Yates turns traitor. On February 9th, various newspapers would announce that John Pertree was going to leave Doctor Who. A relatively unknown Tom Baker was recommended to Bill Slater, current head of drama serials. The 11th season would continue with Death to Daleks and the Monster of Paladin. The Monster of Paladin is the last time that we will see the Ice Warriors for 39 years. Robert Sloman and Barry Letts would collaborate to close the Third Doctor's tenure in memorable style with the Planet of Spiders. In this story, Barry Letts would make his most explicit statement to date on his spiritual beliefs with a parable on Buddhist meditation. This story is a fitting end for five years of constant popular television, television that would never patronize its audience. This is the era of the John Pertwee Doctor. He would begin in exile, spend years defending Earth with occasional missions for the Time Lords. His exile would end in the first multi-Doctor story, a tradition that continues today, after which his travels would begin again. The Pertwee era was the time of the Action Doctor, strong companions and unit, leaving the next Doctor with large shoes to fill. I hope you've enjoyed these videos about the John Pertwee era. The next doctor is Tom Baker. Together with Philip Hinchcliffe, it's time to tell a scary story. So enjoy your journey through time and space, and please remember, a child cannot have a favorite book if they do not have one. Give a child a book today. Good night, everyone.